Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we look to you with thanksgiving in our heart for your great love and mercy and kindness towards us, Lord. We pray that at this time, your word will come forth with power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that can draw us close to you and help us to love you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just think about what God has done for us. God created us. He created the whole world, got it ready, and then placed man on this earth, created man out of the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils, gave him the image of God. And with that image of God, man chose to sin against God. That freedom that God gave him, man chose to sin against God. And since then, all of us have sinned, misused the freedom that God gave us to sin against God. But God didn't give us up. God sent his son, his only son, to come for us, take our sin on himself so that he would be punished for our sins instead of us so that he could forgive us. He could draw us to himself and make us his children. That's what he has done for us. And uh, after he did this for us, he says, you are now my ambassadors on this earth to proclaim the gospel, to be lights and salt unto the world. God is depending on us now to be this light unto the world. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. God has entrusted the gospel to us. God has entrusted the truths about himself and his ways and his plans for the future, everything he has entrusted to us so that we will put this light on a lampstand and let it shine out to all the world which is lying in darkness, in ignorance and foolishness. And if we choose to hide this light under a basket. In, in other words, we keep it for ourselves. We talk about it within the church. We don't want to get into controversies with darkness around us. We enjoy this light that is given to us. But in effect, we put this under baskets and the world starves for light. The world is continuing in darkness and the world is looking for the sons of light to be revealed. And we chose to keep these things, keep the light and the understanding and the knowledge and the grace, everything God has given to us. We keep that for ourselves because the world doesn't agree with us and we don't want to disagree with the world. We want to, we think we want to be peaceful and nice towards the people. Therefore, we hide this light under the bushel, under the basket, and then people suffer lack. God made us to be ambassadors for Christ, and we are keeping all the light for ourselves. Acts chapter 12, um, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 26, verse 18. This is God's plan to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness for, of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. This is what God wants us to do for the people of the world. They are dwelling in darkness. They don't know where they are going. They have no idea what God wants to do for them, how he wants to bless them. They are starving for God without even knowing that there is a God. And here we have been entrusted 
with this light and this knowledge and this understanding and everything and how can we keep that for ourselves we are the light of the world jesus said 1 john chapter 5 verse 19 we know that we are of god and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one we can see that when we look around at the world we can see that the power of the evil one is conquering more and more people in this world even in the church people are turning away from god to the world giving up their faith in god himself and choosing rather to be gods themselves doing whatever they like independent people without reference to any god or any authority above them this is what is happening satan is working through the media to influence people on a large scale which was not possible earlier now he is reaching out to people through the internet through the tv through um, videos and messages and all that confusing people turning people away from god distorting the image of god in their sight people are thinking god is arbitrary god is cruel the total opposite of what he really is we know that god has given us the grace to know how compassionate he is how merciful he is how patient and long suffering he has been to us but if we keep this light under this bushel how will people get to know this god and be free from this all all this misunderstanding that satan has put around them and satan has also influenced people in the church people are becoming more and more liberal in their understanding of the bible many people are saying that there are no miracles everything has a natural explanation even without the re resurrection even without believing in the virgin birth we still can be christians what does ha what is happening ultimately this leads us to think that christianity is just like one of the other religions a lot of good things to talk about and a lot of stories to believe in follow and all that but we are just like other religions ultimately leading to satan's goal of making people believe that it doesn't matter which religion you follow everything leads to god or to no god just for our our thinking and understanding and all that do we want people to end up like that when the light has been given to us and we know from our own experience what it has meant to us how we used to be and how god came into our life and changed our life he changed the entire direction of our life set us on a new path and he has transformed our thinking our behavior our the way we speak everything is being transformed of course we are not perfect yet but god has put us on that path towards perfection and we keep that to ourselves can we keep that to ourselves okay let's look at some of the things satan has done in this world turning people away from god if we believe this teaching on evolution that life came into existence on this earth by accident by the accidental coming together of certain chemicals at a certain time and suddenly life sprung forth and then evolved over billions of years from tiny one-celled creatures to what we are now if we believe that what's the implication then we don't need god to explain things we can we don't need to believe in god because it all came by accident god was not there in the picture god is not the one who created us do we understand that if we follow evolution these are the implications of that belief we can't have belief in god and also in evolution if we believe what god has said 
in the word of god how he created everything for man and placed man finally on the earth formed adam out of the dust of the earth breathed into him and gave him a spirit animals don't have a spirit they have a body just like us a mind like us but no spirit with our spirit because god is a spirit we can communicate to god it's not a story we can hear god we can talk to god we communicate with god because he created us with a spirit we are not animals we are not like birds or fish or any other creatures we are a special creation of god if we believe in evolution and follow it according to its logic there is no place for god in that concept and then it also follows if we are just a collection of chemicals come together by accident where are morals coming in can chemicals say this is right and that is wrong no if people have over the years formed certain opinions about what is right and wrong and all that but there is really no origin from god to tell us this is right this is wrong then we can believe anything we like can can't we one person says this is right and another person says that is wrong but god is the one who created us he is the moral person and he has said this is wrong and that is right so what happens if we don't believe in god then we are basically animals we can also live by whatever we feel like instinctively we like to do this so we do it irrespective of whether we know in our heart right or wrong no even if god tells us that is wrong we feel like doing it so we do it just like animals without any moral values can we not do that there is no life after death if we are just some chemicals living for some time and the big things begin to malfunction here and there in our body and once we die that's the end of life these are the implications if we believe evolution but there are some problems with this thing called evolution facts don't all fit together with that theory one is we have a moral sense which we are born with even before our parents train us even before anybody tells us that is wrong this is right we have our own understanding as small children that's not fair and if we tell a lie as a 3 year old in our, our face it shows that it feels us makes us feel guilty nobody taught us these things because we were born with that conscience built into us that's what god says in his word evolution still remains a theory which cannot be proved nobody was there when all these things were supposed to happen nobody actually saw except god who created he knows everything about how things happen but these are theories and what happens is every now and then somebody finds a flaw with this theory and then that gets revised and how evolution started is not how it stands now and even now it is not able to explain everything around us there are still gaps in that theory there are still missing links between different species and all that but we would rather believe such things because that's the popular understanding we don't want to go against the popular teachings and we don't want to appear peculiar we don't want to feel that we are regressive in our thinking we do, we want to go with the times then we follow this evolution but we must remember what are the implications god is almighty when god created man before that he had created the whole universe can you imagine take one example you know it takes ta- light also time to travel from the farthest galaxies to the present time on this earth is it not possible for this almighty god when he was placing man on this earth 
to have already prepared everything in such a way that it's a stable situation for him, for man on this earth with the light having already reached the earth as we see it now nothing is impossible with god isn't it better to trust in this god rather than the theories of man which don't fit every everything that is happening around us but if we f- believe what god says in his word the christian world view makes sense on the whole it is cohesive it fits together it explains the past the present and the future everything fits together yet we want to appear pop popular among people so we fall for these theories another thing that satan has done is to infiltrate the church and to cause problems in regard to the inspiration of the bible many people many christians say like with their lips this is the word of god every word there is inspired by god all that but they act as though the bible is not inspired they pick and choose certain portions from the bible which they like and actually reject certain portions which they don't like and attribute it to various reasons some people say no that was not for us that was for those people and this is the style of this language here it do- doesn't apply to us those are mythological things which are just recorded because that is what was believed by people in those days various explanations like that and we actually take away the power from the word but you remember jesus quoted many many times from the old testament just as though the old testament was the word of god and that is how jesus gave credit or he accredited the authenticity of the old testament word of god and when it comes to the new testament we read in second peter chapter 3 verses 15 and 16 and regard the patience of our lord as salvation just as also our beloved brother paul according to the wisdom given him wrote to you as also in all his letters speaking in them of these things in which there are some things that are hard to understand which the untaught and the unstable distort as they also do the rest of scriptures to their own destruction here peter is saying in the writings of paul the apostle there were certain things which were difficult to understand we also have to agree there are certain things difficult to understand but just because they are difficult to understand do we have the right or the authority to interpret them any way we like discard some of them accept only what is we think is good or appropriate and the, the what we we need to note here why i am quoting this is to point out that peter referred to the writings of paul as scripture so there were books in the old new testament which were being circulated among the churches those days and people recognize these are scriptures words from god written by people but inspired by god now that is being questioned now i am not going into arguments about uh, critical textual analysis and all such things no what i want to do is to look at some of the things happening right now or over the years which prove that this bible is not an ordinary book think about the not just thinking about the claims of the bible itself saying these are the words of god inspired by god no think about what is happening millions of people all over the world civilized people educated people advanced levels of understanding and logic and argument and simple minded people millions of people have had god speaking to them concerning the events of their life the situations they were going through received comfort guidance correction 
and leading all from this book we call the Bible. And the worst types of sinners, including us, we know how one day when we the word of the god the word of the gospel became alive to us we repented from our sins and god transformed our life isn't that genuine isn't that real isn't that more miraculous than water turning into wine old lives old ways of life being transformed that is happening has happened to millions of people all around the world including us isn't that a proof this is the word of god if this is the word of god don't we have to believe what god the word says in all the different books of the bible of course they use different different uh, styles their different vocabulary and all these things yes they were written by people human beings yes but behind it all is the inspiration of the word of god that is why the bible says about the word of god as a living word of god not just some dead written words collected together no living it means life to us at different times and i was saying earlier when we read the whole bible put all the facts together all the understanding together we get what we call the christian world view about god about creation about the people about our future why we sin what is sin what happens when we sin and what can we do when we have sin how we can get back to god and how god receives us and how what god has planned for us everything fits together in a logical connected manner that is what we call the christian world view and we can take the world views of many other religions and subject all of them to questioning and find out that they are not coherent they contradict their points within themselves and they don't all agree with one another all that but we have a living testimony here that for thousands of years even before jesus came the word of god was given to us and that has stood the test of time isn't it right for us to believe in this word trust our life into this world but like i said earlier people downgrade the authenticity of the word of god they take away the miracles of jesus and explain them away we we they don't want to look at the universal flood that happened one day they will say it is a normal small flood in that area then they don't want the crossing of the red sea jesus turning water into wine all these things never happened they are all some mythological understanding or the to according to the language of the people of those times and all that then what do we become finally in spite of this living reality of god in our life if we follow this kind of teaching where do we end up just like one of the other religions just a lot of nice stories and nice ideas and all that is that christ is that why jesus had to come and die on the cross and draw, rise from the dead suffer innocent man suffering for the sins of the whole world do we have this light in our heart and we still keep it in inside baskets hide it away from the people and we subjugate ourselves to people's opinions we recapitulate on what they are saying we agree with them we find ourselves accommodating our own ideas to fit their opinions is that how the we should be projecting our light another thing that has happened in the world is what we can call the sexual re- revolution that has crept over the whole world it all began with homosexual activism it became aggressive and they compelled the american psychiatric association apa and the judiciary and all that compelled them to change first of all the mental health criteria which used to consider homosexuality as a mental disorder and that was removed and then judiciary began to say whatever two people do together is not our business to adjudicate that is their choice personal rights became so powerful that people could do anything and say it is my right 
as long as I don't hurt other people. And what has happened? It has not stopped with just homosexual behavior. It's also gone to transgenderism where people say that gender is a fluid thing. One man claims to be a woman and a boy claims to be a girl and all these things are going on. And, and, and young people have suffered, children have suffered because of the confusion of their mind and they go through sex change surgeries and all that. And even though medically speaking, once you are born with this male chromosomes or this female chromosome, they affect all the cells of our body. And even if we replace certain parts of our body with surgery, the rest of our body doesn't change and the confusion that results, slowly people will begin to learn that even though they had this adventure with new ideas of transgenderism and all that, finally they will face the consequences. And that's the confusion God, you know, people have brought into this world. And we have the light of God. And if we don't speak against it, because they will call us bigots, fundamentalists, and hate mongers, and regressive, and all these things, we are scared. We want to be politically right. We want to be socially right. And so we submit to all these new ideas that are coming up, even though in our heart we know this is wrong. And those people also know in their heart that they are wrong. But that's the new trend and we choose to keep quiet about it. Everybody knows these people who go for this same-sex marriage so unnatural. They cannot have babies like that. They know it. And their bodies were not designed to be like that. They know it. But they are compelled by their emotions and their attractions and all these things and there is nobody to talk about it. And we church, we Christians are pulling back from the attack saying, we are facing attack. We are being, being looked at as ridiculous people, silly people. So we somehow want to give in to them and go along with them and say, yeah, you are also okay, we are also okay. That is to hide our light under the bushes. Another thing which we all know, are familiar with is feminism. God made us male and female, but now certain, certain women are claiming that there is no difference between male and female. They can do what we can do and all this distortions of the facts, even though we were created equal by God, God assigned to us different roles. The way our bodies are made, a male body is different from a female body. It shows that a male is meant for a certain type of activity and female is meant for a certain type of activity. Ignoring all that, trying to create an equality where it doesn't exist in the form of roles, People have gone astray. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Both male and female have been created in the image of God. There is no distinction as far as God's image is in us. Male or female doesn't make a difference. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. The moment we become a child of God, it does not matter whether we are male or female as far as God is concerned. As far as we are on this earth, we have a role to play as a male and as a female. Different roles, complementary roles. That's how we fit in the plan of God. So this feminism has taken the world completely in a chaotic manner. Matthew chapter 22 verse 30 For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. We know angels don't reproduce. They have no children. They have no babies. And Jesus is telling us when we reach heaven, 
when we are in in eternity there is no giving in marriage there is no marriage that kind of a relationship is only for this earth as long as we are here otherwise male and female on this earth when we are in eternity we are all the same like angels 1 corinthians 11 3 but i want you to understand christ is the head of every man and the man is the head of a woman and the and god is the head of christ this is an order god has placed on this earth because of the differences in our roles ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 and 22 and subject yourselves to one another in the fear of god wives subject yourselves to your own husbands as to the lord he is defining the order in a family wives to subject themselves to their husbands and it later on it says children obey your parents servants obey your masters these are all examples of what we read in the beginning subject yourselves to one another depending on our role a pastor will submit to the music leader when it comes to music and uh, they all submit to the accounts manager when it comes to accounts so depending on the role we submit to one another somebody is responsible for something the other submit to him when it comes to that responsibility that is a meaning so there is nothing inferior or superior when it comes to wives and husbands it is a matter of the order god has placed in the family but that has all been thrown away by these feminists in their zeal to deliver themselves from the bondage of centuries of man's dominion over women men mistreating women as if they didn't have any value we agree all that was wrong but that does not mean there is no distinction between men and women on this earth physical and mental differences children are getting confused in such families where there is no clarity of who is the head who is responsible for for the final decision who is who is responsible for the well being of the family there is no such clarity so unnecessary battles between husbands and wives and children and parents all because of this lack of clarity the lack of job description things like that another thing that is rampant around the world is a desire for personal rights god wants all of us to be subject to him if we follow his rules we will be happy people it will go well with us if we disobey god it will go bad with us that's the way it is but if we think we don't need to be subject to god we don't need to be subject to anybody this is what i wish to do i will do it if we think like that we will ruin ourselves but that's the that's the trend in the world everybody wants to declare independence for themselves and i am under nobody's rule i am under nobody's authority i will do what i like but that's the way to destruction going against the plans of god and this is the way people have gone around in this world and now we are called to be the lights of this world you know there are generally two ways in which people de- deal with this situation one way is to accept god's revelation as the truth and try to see how other views can be fitted in or cannot be fitted in that is to make the word of god as the source of our authority as the basis for our beliefs and then deal with people who differ from that in, according to that belief the other belief which many people seem to be taking up is they start first with what people say or what it what appears to be right in their own eyes and then they look back at the bible and try to reinterpret the bible to fit in with their current thinking now a lot of people are fallen for the second approach and then what happens the light that comes from the word of god has to be kept hidden 
it is only available for discussion within the church or within seminaries and all that but we project to the world that we are one with them we agree with them we follow the trends that that are going on we don't want to be regressive we want to be progressive christians we adapt to the society that's the approach many people have taken instead of being the lighthouse in the midst of the storm around in midst in the midst of the darkness around and standing there upright believing in god as the creator god as the lawgiver god as the ultimate truth we have succumbed to the pressure that has come from the world and we have aligned ourselves with the worldly views world worldly understanding of what they claim to be the truth and we have adjusted our own thinking our light to fit with their idea of light and darkness now god is calling us 1 john chapter 2 verse 17 the world is passing away and also its lust but the one who does the will of god continues to live forever that's our calling follow the will of god give respect to god's word trust in him don't lean on our own understanding that's god's call for us matthew chapter 24 verses 10 to 13 and at that time many will fall away these times and they will betray one another and hate one another and many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people and because lawlessness is increased most people's love will become cold but the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved what is happening pressures around us in the world are increasing lies falsehoods are being heaped upon us because lawlessness in all these directions is increasing the love of many for god for god's truths that love is growing colder and colder and many are even giving up their faith in god totally choosing to be atheists rather than followers of jesus given to their confusion and understanding matthew chapter 5 verse 13 you are the salt of the earth but if the salt has become tasteless how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by people don't let that happen to us if we have known god if god has been gracious enough and got to know us and we have been made children of god our sins have been washed away by the sacrifice of jesus on the cross if jesus is transforming our lives if the holy spirit is helping us to be more and more transformed to have our eyes open to see more of god and see clearly to discriminate between what is right and wrong if we are if this is all happening in our life make sure our love for god is not getting colder but we should be able to endure all these pressures that are coming upon us god is with us he said he will never leave us he will never abandon us hold on to him stand with him proclaim him without fear may god help every single one of us who belongs to him amen